And here's some questions and answers. Jim from Nebraska writes, I just bought my first telescope, an 8-inch Dobsonian reflector. What kind of eyepieces should I get for it? Okay, first of all, you did the right thing. You got the right first telescope. You didn't make the mistake that most people make when they get their first telescope. They go to a department store. People like me have been railing against this for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and I'm not sure it's doing any good because that's what people do when they buy their first telescope. 90% of them probably go to a department store and then they use it once or twice and they discover that it's no good. So good for you, you got the right first telescope. Okay, now onto the eyepieces. So this is probably the most common question I get about equipment after people get their first telescope. What kind of eyepieces should I get? And my first answer often surprises people. Don't. Don't buy anything. There's plenty here to keep you busy for a very long time. When you're just getting started in this hobby, there's so much for you to learn. You have to learn the night sky, you have to learn how to use a telescope, and you have to learn how to see. Seeing is an art and a skill. In the beginning, the eyepiece is rarely your bottleneck. Don't worry about it. So when it comes time to buy that first eyepiece, my answer again often surprises people. My usual answer is to replace the 25 millimeter eyepiece that probably came with your telescope with another eyepiece of similar focal length. Now at first, this may seem counterintuitive. I've got a 25 millimeter eyepiece, why am I buying another 25 millimeter eyepiece? Well, there's a reason it came with a 25 millimeter eyepiece. An 8 inch f6 Dobsonian, a 6 inch f8, most telescopes have medium aperture, that 25 millimeter eyepiece is the perfect power perfect low power eyepiece. So it makes sense since you're going to be using it most of the time to get a better quality one. Now I used to name names here and I have to be very careful because I would recommend expensive eyepieces to people and they would spend a lot of money and they'd say well you know I'm not sure it was worth it. So I am a little more careful these days in recommending expensive stuff because eyepieces are a highly personal decision. What I like may not match what you like. My favorite eyepieces are the ones from Teleview. Now they cost a lot, but eyepieces are the kinds of things you buy only once. This is counterintuitive to beginners, but your eyepieces have a tendency to stay with you longer than your telescopes do. That may not make a lot of sense to begin with, but you buy your eyepieces, they tend to stay with you as you trade your telescopes up and down. So my personal philosophy is to get the best eyepieces that you can. Again, I like the Televiews, you may like something else. If I were to recommend one eyepiece that I use more than any of the others, it is the Teleview 27mm Panoptic. I take that thing everywhere with me. Now if you're going to buy your second eyepiece, again, this is a surprise, your telescope probably came with a second eyepiece. It's usually a 9 or a 10mm, something in that range, and again, you guessed it, my response is to replace the 9 or 10mm eyepiece with something of higher quality. Again, there's a reason it came with a 10 millimeter eyepiece. It's usually in a telescope like a eight inch F6 Dobsonian reflector, really good for planets. It frames them really well. So I would get a better quality one and replace it. Now, what do you do with the old eyepieces? Well, if you use them for star parties or for kids or anything like that, you don't want to risk your expensive stuff. Use the cheap eyepieces in there. Now I've said this to so many people over so many years and they don't listen to me. <laughs> I tell them to get a low power eyepiece and replace the eyepieces that came with their telescope and instead they don't do that, they will go out and buy a high power eyepiece. And sometimes they'll make it worse by buying a 2x Barlow lens and they will make the images twice as fuzzy. And those of you who've been doing this for a while know what happens when somebody buys a high power eyepiece, they use it once or twice and then they never use it again. So if you're going to buy an eyepiece with a different focal length than the ones that came with your telescope, I actually usually advise that you go in the opposite direction. Get a lower power eyepiece than the one that came with your scope. So if it came with a 25 millimeter eyepiece of, you know, general use of Plossel or a Kellner or something like that, try going to a 32 millimeter for an even wider field. Again, this is counterintuitive for some of you who are new at this, but I spend probably 85 to 90 percent of my time at my lowest possible power. A lot of the objects are the, up there are quite large. You don't need a lot of magnification and what you're doing is you're relying on the telescope to gather light and you want to see the whole thing. So try that. 
go for the lower power IPs instead of the higher power IPs. Joe from Seattle writes, been reading your stuff for 20 years, thanks for everything you do. I have a Celestron AVX mount, just like yours. I've had it for three years and I use it all the time with no problems. The other night I was doing a two star line and the first star was Arcturus towards the west. The mount moved the scope in the opposite direction towards the east. It's never done this before, I'm really concerned. What do I do? Okay, yes, they're gonna do this. Look, I've said this before, all mounts, as they age, tend to become trouble prone. I don't care who made it. In the case of the AVX, first of all, be glad the display did not say error code 16 or error code 17. You see those two error codes, you're in big trouble. Okay, so here's what you do. First thing, go to your controller and if you're able, hit the menu button, go to utilities and do a factory reset. You're gonna reset the controller back to the factory defaults. That usually clears the faults. Now I have these AVXs, I use them a lot, and I figure once every 12 months or so, something starts to go screwy with them, and so far, every time that I've done this, I reset to factory defaults, and it has cleared whatever fault has crept into the system. I would do this as soon as possible, because it's not likely to get any better, and if it gets worse, you may not be able to access the functions entirely. Okay, now in the event that the factory default does not fix the problem, you're going to have to go back and reflash the firmware or update the firmware. Now you can go online, there are YouTube videos that do a much better job than I could of doing this, but I will say a couple of things about this. First of all, set aside some quiet time where you won't be disturbed when you do this. It's going to take a little more time than you might think if you're doing this for the first time. I wouldn't do this if I was in a hurry or going out the door anytime soon. The second thing I want to caution you is when I've ever I've done this, my biggest problem has been the cable. This is a serial cable. It's a serial era sort of updater. And when you, when you run this program, uh, you're going to feel like it's 15 or 20 years ago, and it's slow. So another reason why you want to set aside some time. So you are going to need a serial to USB converter, which I have here. Now, I have several of these converters, and for some reason, this is the only one that actually works. So I treat this thing like gold. One other thing you want to be aware of, these controllers are not all the same. They look the same, but they're not the same. If you have an equatorial mount, it's usually written on the back here. It says EQ or GEM for German Equatorial Mount. The Alt-AS controllers, like the one in this next star behind me, have a different kind of firmware in them and require a different kind of updater. Also, if you have the old CG5, it's not the same software as the new AVX. Watch out for that. Mike from Ohio writes, Ed, why do you have so many Celestron mounts? You know, that's a good question. I don't know if I have an answer for that one. I don't know if I'd read any kind of agenda into this. Uh, I buy all my stuff used, and whenever I need something, I look around to see what suits my needs at a price that I'm willing to pay, and that's what I've wound up with. I think I have five Celestron go-to mounts right now, but that's just the way it turned out. Another reader says, Ed, have you ever been on television? Yeah, I've done some television. It's mostly community stuff. It's Manchester, New Hampshire. It's Concord, New Hampshire. And I've done some stuff around the greater Boston area. Um, I'm okay at it, I guess. I think what I learned the most from doing this is watching the people do the lighting and the audio. It's really helped me in my setup here. Scott from Florida says, Ed, how many telescopes do you own? You know, that's a really good question, too. It becomes a philosophical issue because what constitutes a telescope? If I have an optical tube but no mount, is that a telescope? I would say, yeah, that probably is. Uh, my friend has a definition that says, it's a telescope if you can look through it and see an image. That sounds good at first glance, but let's say you have a telescope and it doesn't have an eyepiece in it. Is it, is it a telescope? By his definition, no. By, by my definition, yeah, I think it is. Uh, let's say I have a reflector and it's missing the secondary mirror. Is that a telescope? I think it probably is. But let's say it's missing the primary. Is that a telescope? I would say probably not. So you see you run into all these issues. Anyway, I don't know. Around here I have at any point in time maybe 25 or 30 telescopes. I posted a silly picture of myself on my website posing with a bunch of these. And by the way, now some of you have some really crazy collections out there and will go to great lengths to hide these telescopes from your significant other. 
Uh, I've heard of some of you even taking telescopes and placing them in your friend's house so that it looks like your collection is smaller. I can't condone that, no sir, not in our fine hobby. I do know there are some wives who follow me on this channel, and one local wife in particular, I do want to point out that large white 6-inch refractor over my shoulder here, your husband did not take that out of your house to make it look cleaner and put it in my house temporarily to hide it from you. No sir, he did not do that, I bought it from him, yes I did. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.